best podcast in Long Beach, California. This is Tacos and Workouts. Hola, Nicole. This is me, Little Hater. And guess what, Doug? This podcast is brought to you by the Patio Nuts. You had me at hola. So go out and get some of these nuts. It's the Patio Nuts. <laughs> what it is, what it is. Podcast. Yo, what it is, what it is, with the best podcast in Long Beach, California. It's your boy Tacos and Workouts, and I have with me the most famous foodie in Los Angeles, Mr. Mexi Papa himself. How's everybody doing out there? Thank you for having me, brother. Yeah, man, look, the, the best um, foodie and the best podcast, we finally made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to have some fun. Like <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I, I've been following you for a while now, man. When I started Tacos and Workouts, I thought I was a, a unique channel, right? And then somebody told me, oh, there's another guy out there that does food reviews. And I go, who? And they go, Mexi Papa. And then I looked you up, and I have to admit, man, I was, like, blown away with oh, your videos. I was man. like, man, that's that's awesome. He's doing the exact same thing that I'm doing, and, and, and you made it look really good, man. <laughs> And, and 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 a lot of people could say that man you have a lot of followers man thank you thank you i do my best out there <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah i mean I, I mean i have a lot of fun i i love what i do so every day i wake up with a smile i go to sleep with a smile all day long i mean come on man i eat tacos for a living <laughs> who could say they eat tacos for a living Right here. Hey, that's beautiful, man. It's it's. But you know what, man? Uh, uh, I'm a little bit jealous of you, man. And I'll tell you why. Because you eat a lot more tacos than I do, and you don't gain any weight, man. I eat two, three tacos, and I blow up, man. What's the, what's the deal? What's your secret, man? Well, it's... I got... Well, let me tell you all the secret, okay? Ready, you ready to hear my secret? Um, we're, we're all ears. We're all ready to hear that secret. I have Mexi Papa Powers. That's what it is. That's what it is. Superpowers. <laughs> no, you know what? I'll be honest. Uh, I eat all day long. All day long. I mean, I probably eat sometimes five, six times a day. I'll probably, uh, you know, film some tacos at five, six o'clock and then go home and have some dinner. Wow. You know? But it's because your system, when it's constantly working, every day, it's working. Okay. And then I drink, probably go through about... Uh, between a gallon and two gallons of water a day. Okay, so it's a water consumption. Yeah, a lot of water. Like I was waiting for you here, maybe about half an hour. I put two of these of water. Well, yeah. there, there it is. That's what I got to do, start drinking and the then water. I, 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 the Jamaica is gone already. <laughs> so a lot of liquids. Um, yeah, but 52 years old, I can still run, jump. I don't, I don't need glasses. <laughs> and all powered by tacos. Powered by tacos, man. Hey, who knows? Maybe we might get a workout someday. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> so, man, uh, I'm happy that you're here. Um, and and I, I want to ask you, how did you get started with with the Mexi Papa Adventures? You know what? I think Mexi Papa Adventures came. Sometimes when I think about it, because I get that question asked a lot, and I and I go all the way back when I was a kid. Tacos just made me so happy. I mean, you hear the word tacos, and you smile right away. Yeah. When you're eating tacos, you're just a happy man. When you tell somebody, let's go have some tacos, everybody's just smiling. So since I was a kid, tacos made me so happy. Growing up, I, I did get into the food industry for many years. A lot of people don't know this, but I was a restaurant consultant for about 20 years. Traveled to about 30 states, and uh, I did a lot of food photography. I did. I uh, helped out with. I uh, helped out with marketing, consulting, and some cooking as well. So I have all that in my background. 20 years. So one day, I said, "Man, I'm, I'm just exhausted. It's too much. Too much traveling." And I was like a one-man show. And I seen that social media was coming up. So I started looking at social media. Uh, food, of course. Right away, I wanted food. 
and I saw the people that were doing food back then, um, I didn't think they were representing well. Let's just put it that way. Um, some would sit there and just cuss. They, they wouldn't t really talk about the food, showcase the business, you know, the, the way they, sh they, they should be. Other races did. I was like, where are the paisas at? There ain't, there ain't no paisas really, really helping businesses talking about food. So one day I'm in um, South Central and I'm at uh, Teddy's Red Tacos. Okay. And there's Teddy there. He, invite, he invites me over. I go over there and he's there by himself in a little truck. And then uh, he invites me up and I tell my nephew, just, just film me. So me and Teddy had a taco. That was my first video. And I just did it just, let me see what it looks like. So people love that video. And then I started getting calls. Hey, can you come over here and taste, taste my tacos? Can you come over here and do this, do that? So I said, okay, let me get better. <laughs> <laughs> let me get better at this. The only thing that has not changed has been my bite. I eat exactly like that since I was a kid. You know what? My, uh, <laughs> my wife tells me, um, don't take so many big bites. <laughs> And I'm like, look, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat, <laughs> and then like, because that's how I, you know, you, you know, you're enjoying yeah. it, you know. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta eat. How you, I mean, sometimes I'll be at a taco stand, just eating, right? I'm just, I'm just having some tacos, and then some people will come up to me and say, "Hey, that's how you really eat, huh?" <laughs> you know, that's exactly you eat exactly in your videos. Yeah, I mean, I freaking enjoy my tacos to the max, and yeah, I take big bites. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so, um, but you're you're you were uh, you were born in Mexico, okay, no? Yes. Okay. Born in Jalisco, and I'm gonna go all the way down to a rancho. I'm, I was born in a rancho, and when I mean a rancho, it was like like three houses, right in the middle of the boonies, like like a like a now we're away from a town. So that the rancho was called Las Juntas. And it's called Las Juntas because it was met by, by un arroyito y un rio. They met. So that was Las Juntas. And then the town nearby was it's called Santa Rosalia. So born in a rancho, so I know the rancho life. Came to the pueblo when I was like four. But every vacation, school vacation, I'll always go back. And I love it. Everything is so fresh. I mean, I'm talking, you're talking about tortillas? Shoot. Go. Land a plantar, cosechar, bring the corn, uh, do the make the nistamal, make the freaking masa, and then you know make the tortillas and, uh, and the comal, and that was every day. Every day you wake up to that freshness, frijoles. Okay, they were gonna do a, a fiesta, you know, they'll kill a pig right there, and within an hour so it was already in a castle. Already, already being already. cooked. A freaking chile, a salsa. You go to the cerro and you pick up tomatillos. They, they're right there. And you bring them and they make this freaking salsa. Unbelievable. So I kind of grew up with those taste buds of, uh, of knowing what, uh, what freshness is like. And I appreciate it when I come to places and they give me that. And I can right away taste freaking frozen. I can right away taste all that. So, it's helped me along the way. So people people might have like a misconception, like you're just a guy who decided to start doing food reviews yes. just on a whim, but little do they know, there's like a huge backstory that food was always in your background and that's how you got started. Yeah. You know, you just didn't pick it up and decide, hey, I'm gonna become the, the most popular uh, Instagram uh, foodie. It, there's actually a lot of uh, story behind that. And, it's, and to me, sometimes it's funny because people comment, you know, this guy, all he knows how to do is eat. <laughs> he doesn't know anything, you know. But I, I'm not going to sit there and throw my story behind. I mean, I know what I've what I done, yeah. you know. But it's helped me, though. It's helped me review. Because you know what? I've, I've seen uh, uh, some of the comments um, that people, um, you know, have left you. And, and I know that some of the comments I get sometimes, too. And I'll be like, wow, man, it's like you're really going to just... You have nothing better to do than just to criticize somebody who's working hard to entertain you for free. 
it's it's amazing. But you know what? I see nothing but love in, in what you do and everything, man. And 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 it shows. And one one thing that I you know I want to get clear now that we're here, and I'll say it on your show. Uh, number one question that I get asked a lot, or criticized a lot, I should say. This guy, this guy approves everything. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just says it's good because he eats for free. <laughs> this guy just says it's good because they pay him to say that. Dude, really? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of things that go behind the camera that I never put in front. Mm -hmm. Bad food, bad tacos, bad places, bad people. I come across that a lot. So what are the what happens that it just don't make it to my videos? Yeah, you know what? I totally agree with you. Um, somebody asked me like a similar question, like, why why do you only do this? And I said, look, man, I'm not in a position to make a video, put it out there, and then I hurt somebody's business. Yeah. That as we don't we don't want to do that as as creators. You know, if we could help a business grow, we're definitely gonna do that. But if it's gonna negatively impact the business, at the end of the day, they have like families they have to like provide for. It. And it's it's not cool when when you do something like that. You know, I I did it once, and I'm guilty of it once. But uh, I'm not gonna say names. <laughs> yeah, don't say. <laughs> but uh, this guy, uh, I went to this guy's place, and I didn't like his tacos. I didn't like them. So I put him to the side. I said, Hey, hey listen, you know, the, the tortilla man is falls apart. Salsa got no flavor. You meat is, I mean, come and throw some salt on it. Mm -hmm. But I gave him some pointers how to improve his tacos. And he's like, so you, you're not gonna give me your Mexi Papa sticker? No. <laughs> so uh, he got so mad and furious with me that he went into one of my pages and started talking, I mean, so much smack. A little, a little too much, a little overboard, uh -huh. I should say. Yeah. I usually handle criticism very well. But this guy just hit a nerve. Mm -hmm. Just he was just poking and poking and poking and poking. So when I, I went on DM and I said, "Hey, listen, um, stop already. I don't want to hurt you. Mm -hmm. No, you can't do nothing to me." I said, "I don't want to hurt you. Just stop." And he kept going and going and going. I said, "All right." All I did. I put, okay, you guys want to hear of a non Mexi Papa approved spot? Here's one. And I put his comment. So within, Jesus, I would say within like an hour, it was like five, six hundred comments already, and everybody was going at him. But it was so bad that uh, I don't know what happened that his Instagram uh, disappeared. Mm. I guess he got reported. I don't know. Yeah. So he created another one real, real quick, tried to attack me with it, and he and all his pages kept kept blowing up. So um, I was like, okay. So six months later, he contacts me, the guy, and he goes, dude, I really want to apologize. Well, since since you made that comment, I I lost the business. I try to uh, put another Instagram, and people right away identify me with a guy that was that was insulting you, and right away got shut down. And he says he went through about three, and he was he was literally crying, and wow. I, I felt bad. But that's just the one time that somebody cracked me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> usually, all the comments, all the criticism, I turn them into fuel. You know. You get like like I remember one. You can never get to fifty thousand. You're no good. Zoom, flew right by fifty. <laughs> you will never hit a hundred. Zoom, flew right by a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 you know this you gotta have really thick skin. Thick skin, or else you won't survive. But uh, the the comments, the criticisms, are very very vicious sometimes. Yeah, they come at you hard. Yeah, so some come at you with everything they got, you know. But sometimes you go in there and look at their profile, zero followers, uh, zero posts. Like, okay, 
<laughs> yeah, you know, you could tell with, with your accounts and, and all that, man. But you know what? Um, that's just what people do. Um, hey, um, I, I got to go to your your uh, your uh, street taco wars last year. I, I was there, and I had a blast, man. I was walking around. Uh, 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 little hater was there for a little bit, then he took off, and then I was there, and uh, you know, walking around with my big sombrero, and it was, <laughs> and man, it was, it was so much fun, man. You had like uh, carnitas, who, who's the best carnitas, right? Tell us a little bit about that event. How, what what made you want to pop it off? That event was epic, man. I. It was one dream that I had to do that, one idea that I had. And uh, so I, I was able to execute it. And then not just execute it, but the, the item that I picked was very hard, carnitas. Because it requires a whole castle and for you to be cooking for hours. Then uh, gather up, in my book, the best carnitas that I knew in, uh, in L.A., and put them all together and let them battle it out. Um, it was beautiful. I mean, I don't know if you saw me, but I was, I don't know if you caught me, but sometimes I would just sit there and just look at everything going, damn, did I, did, did I just do that? <laughs> it, it, it was a cool event, man. You know what? You had, you had like, what was it like, I think it was like 10, 10 or more vendors, right? Something yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah. Man, you know what? I was like, you know, you, even though I'm a big guy, I can't eat a lot. I just have that big stomach, right? <laughs> so, like, people were, like, saw me recording, and they're like, hey, eat my taco. And I was like, I could only eat, like, a couple, right? So I'm uh, like, there was, like, only two two spots that I got to eat because the, 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 the tortillas were big, and it was, like, the carnitas were, like, piled on really high. And I was like, damn, now this is a taco. Like, it was a good event, man. Are you going to do another one of those yeah, sometime soon? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually not 100, but I'm looking to do another one. I want to see if I can still do it this year, though. It's going to be called La Guerra de los Trompos. Mm. Reason why I call it La Guerra de los Trompos. Some people say, Guerra del Pastor. No, no. Guerra de los Trompos. Trompos. Because here in L.A., we call them al pastor. Tijuana, they call it adobada. DF, they call it al pastor. And Oaxaca, they, they, they call it tacos árabes. Mm. So, just name it Trompo. That way, any Trompo come in. So I'm working on that one right now as we speak. So it's not like specifically al pastor, it's just it's just tr on the trompo. On a trompo. So it could be a different cut of meat. Yeah, I mean, some people bring it with, uh, like like right now I'm looking at a guy that uh, that uh, does it with octopus. Octopus trompo. Wow. You know, but it's a trompo. Yeah. So it falls right in the category. Yeah. And al pastor is one of the most delicious freaking tacos there is yeah people love al pastor so imagine getting all the all the all the top al pastor in one spot and then i duke it out you know so that's what i'm working on hopefully it happens this year but uh but if it doesn't happen this year it will happen for sure next year you know what? It, if it doesn't happen this year it, it only means that next year will be bigger and greater you oh, know yeah, yeah yes, so yes and I, like I said, that that one's got me very, very excited, El Pastor. Are you coming? Yeah, of, of, of course I'm going to be there, man. <laughs> Are you going to bring that big sombrero you have? I'll bring, I'll bring that big sombrero, and then uh, I'll even bring little haters so he could uh, <laughs> go around uh, doing his little TikTok dances and <laughs> see what he does, man. Little hater? Who are you talking about, little hater? Oh, the guy with the with the, with the the funny mustache and the, and the sunglasses. The guy on the sticker that says tacos and workouts. Oh, yeah, that's a character. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, got he you. he um uh, he kind of took over my show. <laughs> <laughs> he took over my show, and every once in a while, like I'll, I'm able to come out and and host my show again. But he he does a lot of uh, um of the interviews now, and he does some taco reviews, and he he uh, dances on uh, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, so he, he yeah, took it over. I see that guy. I like that guy though, man. Good guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's that's your thing for for Taco Wars, man. Uh, I I I can't wait until you do that one. Um, and and you're pretty big now, right? You have like a, a huge um fan base on Instagram. Like, how does it feel to be the number one uh foodie guy in Los well, Angeles? I, I don't know about the number one. I'll tell you that much. I don't think I'm the, I'm the number one foodie guy, but I can honestly say 
that I'm putting two, three times more work than any foodie out there. I can honestly say that. <laughs> I, I could see it, man. It's like, I remember at one point you were putting out like two to three videos like a day or something or, or definitely post. I don't know if they were full videos, but I definitely saw like, okay, it was like a carnitas, it was a pastor, it was an asada, and I was like, damn, like back to back. And that's that's why I say, how's he do it? He gains no weight at all. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was one point that I, that I was putting up to three YouTube videos a day. A day. A day. Yeah, that, that was pretty insane. But it was it was work from you know morning all the way to the to night. And um, but yeah, like I said, I I do put in a lot of work. Yeah, because you know what? Um, for anybody who wants to be like a creator on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is you do, it it it's a lot of work. It it just doesn't happen just like that overnight. And you know what? It's and I heard it all when I was starting, especially from my family. They had the payasadas. What are you doing? That's not work. Get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't for you. You're too old. You're trying to compete with little kids. I heard all that. But you know what? I had a tunnel vision. I want to get over there. So it's going to probably, I mean, it did require more work from my part. And it's okay. It's okay. Some people can, you know, put some work and get there a little faster probably than me. But for me, it required more work. And the reason why it required more work was, to be honest with you, I had to, I had to get better. If you look at my videos at, at the beginning, throw us a style in front of the camera, man, like this, <laughs> you know. Uh, but this guy in this here, I got him more comfortable with the camera. <laughs> now, camera is my friend now. So it's cool. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, one, one thing that I like about your show, too, is that not only do you cover um, tacos here locally in Los Angeles and, and uh, San Diego and, and here, but you, you actually take your show to, uh, to Mexico and you actually travel to different states to cover good tacos. I mean, uh, I think I lost count, but I think it's between 15 and 20 states that the Mexi Papa sticker is it's on. And then uh, Baja, Nogales, Mexicali, Tecate, Tijuana, uh, Rosarito, Ensenada, Popotla, all that's covered by me. So like I said, it's it's a lot, a lot of work that I put in. And I only started five years ago. Five years yeah. ago. So my, my mentality is not, see, that's why I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put in my name LA Adventures, mm -hmm. California, whatever. No, Mexi Papa Adventures, because my butt's gonna go everywhere. Everywhere the tacos everywhere. take you. Everywhere. If there's good food, a good taco, <laughs> I'll be there. You'll be there. I like that. <laughs> I like that, man. It, it's a trip. How like this this taco journey? T t you have two different taco guys, right? And how far this 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 love for tacos has taken us to like yeah. different places, man. You know what? Uh, like for me, I got it from my dad. Really? Yeah. He was a little guy. And, and, and when I say little, he's 4'11", right? Oh, yeah, he's yeah. Really, very little guy. They call him Chaparrito, right? But my dad always knew where the best loncheras were at. <laughs> Straight up. And I was a kid, so he used to give me tripas, sesos, buche, whatever. I had no idea what the hell I was eating. I know now, right? <laughs> but that's, that's where it came from me. It came from my dad. And then, and then uh, we kind of carried the tradition in my family, and then, and then I wanted to start this. So it's amazing what the love of food could do, man. I mean, food. Let me tell you something. Food. Food is so awesome that it brings people together. It brings cultures together. It makes people happy. People get to express themselves through food. Um, that's what. That's another part why I love food so much. You have a meal with somebody, sitting right in front of having having a meal, a good meal, you connect with people. Sure. And it doesn't matter if they're Mexican, Chinese, doesn't matter where they're from, you connect. Um, yeah, you, you eat tacos with somebody, now they're your friends. <laughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> and you know what? The number one question that I ask sometimes people, I'll be like, do you like tacos? I've never got to know. I've never got to know. 
it, 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 it's it's almost impossible to get oh I don't like tacos it, it, I don't know it's never happened but listen man I, I have a question not for you I just have an, a, a question for Netflix what do we have to do to get this man and this man on Netflix you have the number one taco guy here busting his butt he's got the numbers you got tacos and workouts here What's it gonna take, Netflix? You got two stars right here, willing to put it out. We're available. Call us. <laughs> and and Netflix, you put me on for one second on your last episode on the street food. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Congratulations. But, but, but if you that. blinked, you you're gonna miss it. But you know what? Um, we can go out there really hard on YouTube and create our own show. Yeah, yeah. I guess you know that. What I mean? the, Sometimes it's very hard to get into into channels like like Netflix and so forth, but we can control our shows. We can we can build them and uh, build the audience as well. You're doing a good job, brother. Oh. I, I I really really <laughs> want to congratulate this man. Good podcast. I uh, you have some really good uh, uh, guests on your show as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so. Hustle, keep going, what you, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, trust me, man, you're gonna build it. Uh, congratulations on your 1,000 subs on YouTube. That's pretty cool. And it's hard to grow YouTube, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to grow YouTube. So, uh, good job. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it, it it was very hard, man, and and I finally did it. Um, you know what? The the one thing that I say is if. If you want it bad enough and you and you do it, you know, try hard enough, dreams do come true, man. And, and you know, we're making it work, man. Um, we're here to, to entertain everybody. Um, you know, just because we, we have a, like a, a nice little following, we still, we still need the support of our communities, people to subscribe, you know, to our channels. Give us those likes. Give us that motivation so we could continue producing great content for you guys. Yeah. And then my advice will be this. Okay. Hustle, work hard. Okay. Um, the the other one, the other advice that I would give is don't give up, man. People start and they give up. They don't have the stamina. Don't listen to all those haters. And sometimes they come within within your household. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, just keep it up, keep it going, and you do good. I mean, it, it, yeah. Just go, go at it as hard as you can. <laughs> well, there you go. So listen, we're today we can we decided to host our, our show right here outside of Taco Masa. So we're gonna take a little break and we're gonna go get some tacos. We'll be right back. Did you say tacos? That's right, tacos. That's what I'm talking about. So we're back, and here we are with these tacos, man. Take me through the process. <laughs> well, this is my bread and butter, by the way. Tacos. So we're at Taco Masa, Long Beach. These guys make tacos estilo Tijuana. So the tortillita, amarillita, and el de al pastor. Which camera should I show, showcase it on this one right here? Yeah, that one's fine. <laughs> so if you look at these little taquitos, the tortilla está amarillita. And then the al pastor, check out the color and uh, that al pastor. Uh, you can see the marination. Now, by the way, don't call these tacos al pastor. You gotta call them tacos adobada. Adobada. Yes, because ellos usan adobo. They use okay. adobo for the for, for their tacos. And then they come with a pineapple. And then check this out. I don't like guacamole on my tacos. Okay. Why? Why is that? I feel like it overpowers the taco. Okay. You know, I want to be able to taste the meat, the salsa, and when we put too much guacamole, it to me kind of ruins the taco. It kind of ruins the taco. <laughs> okay. So, you ready to have the first taco with me, brother? I'm ready. Let's do this. But we got to put some salsita on them, though. Some salsita. 
man, we gotta hit it like that. And then you gotta have a limoncito. Hold this mic for me, brother. No problem. I'll use this camera here. You gotta hit it with a Bam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want my mic back? There you go. And let's have a taco. Let's have a taco. Oh. Things are on the way. There you go. Oh, you got the drip going. Look at that. That's that's that, that that's, is that's the one. best, brother. So, chocolate. Cheers. Cheers. Y oh. vámonos. How delicious is that? I love it. I like the drip and I love the pineapple. Now, you, sp you find the different taste between al pastor y adobada. What is the, this what is, is the difference? It's the adobo. They use an adobo on this one. It just kicks a little different. But I freaking love the adobada. You know what does that for me is when I go to a taco spot and they have radishes. That's what that's what does it for me, man. The rabanos. Mm. It doesn't get any better. Long Beach. Out in the open in the patio, having tacos with my friend here. Feel a little wind. Nice cool breeze. Cool breeze. <laughs> you beat me with a taco. I take bigger bites. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <Better> watch out. <laughs> All right, we're going to put these microphones away. And we're going to continue eating some of these tacos. But now we got mulitas. I mean, I heard they're pretty good. Well, let's, let's have some molitas. All right, we're back. We finished those tacos. Those tacos were good. You know, I learned something from Mexi Papa. What's the difference between uh, al pastor and adobo? So, there, you know, like, there's always something you can learn from one taco foodie to another. That's right. So, tell us, Mexi Papa, what's, what, do you have in, what do you have cooking for the future? What's next in your adventures? What are you gonna do next? What is next for my adventures? I mean, I got some, uh, I actually got some really cool plans coming up. Uh, traveling though. I got uh, uh, thinking about going to uh, uh, Thailand, thinking about going to Oaxaca, Puebla. I mean, I wanna go to Mexico a lot, but then there's other countries that are calling my name like Thailand. Um, that's one spot I really wanna go with my buddy Mark Waynes, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, Mark. Uh, now, the, the one thing he told me was, get ready to eat a lot of spicy food. But they don't mess around over here in Thailand, so I'm, I'm good. So there's traveling and just try to reach more people out there. Uh, just grow. Grow as much as I can. And uh, eat more tacos, for definitely. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's always... Tacos is always in the forecast for me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I think I think you do a tremendous job. It, it's and and you know what? Everybody, everybody always tells me. I seen Mexi Papa. I seen him, and I'm like, they always tell me where you're at. Oh, he was right there, and I'm like, yeah, I know him. And I'm like, um, but, and and it's clear to me that you pretty much could do whatever it is you want. You're unstoppable, you know. And uh, you know, you know what? I I would like to see. Your own, your very own brand of Mexi Papa tortillas. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? That'll be fun, and they gotta be good. Oh, they have to be. Yes, yes. I, I'll be very picky if I ever wanna if I ever put something out like that, a tortilla. Um, now you gave me ideas. Hey, 
I tell people I'm the idea guy. You want you want some good ideas? Come to me. I'll help you out. <laughs> but I I think I think that would sell. I know a lot of you people out there would definitely buy Mexi Papa tortillas. I would buy Mexi Papa tortillas. You know, we got the white ones, we get the the the, the brown ones, and even the green ones. You know. I wonder if I could put like you ever seen those, those stencils that put on every tortilla with your face, son? I just see people do that. Yeah. Mexi Papa on every tortilla. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Maybe just on the on the top tortilla. <laughs> you made idea, so that's, pretty, that's, that's cool though. I I am working on some uh, merchandise coming out. I'm working on some really cool designs uh, that I want to do. And then and then after you do the tor- uh, the the tortillas, you could do tortilla chips. <laughs> How what, how's it gonna be the the, the the tortilla slap the one I do where I pop a tortilla? Oh yeah, you, how do you do that, man? I, I I always see you do that. And I'm like, how does he do it, man? Well, I have burned the hell out of me, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> a few times. Because sometimes when the masa is not cooked all the way, it kind of sticks in your hand, and it, and when it sticks in your hand, it's just burning, you know. So a couple of times I had some blisters, but most of the time. I annihilate those tortillas. <laughs> no match for me. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I think we have something. You you combine the tortilla idea with you doing that to the tortilla. It, it sells itself, man. I got a story to tell about, about that. Um, I was in this truck uh, in uh, Bakersfield. And I, I want to pop this tortilla. But it's crowded with people around. So I, I see a little gap. I get a tortilla, put it up, and I just... I mean, slapped it so hard, and a big old piece flew out. I'm talking like a piece this big. And he hit the lady right on the side, <laughs> and he stuck the tortilla right there. It's hilarious, man. And I, I got the whole line camera in slow-mo. It just looks pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, brother, that's, that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, just trying to get better. Trying to get yeah, better. Trying to get better and everything. Uh, Mexi Papa will be coming to more states, more countries, more everywhere. All right, guys. So you heard it first from Mexi Papa himself. Mexi Papa, we want to thank you for making it on to the best podcast in Long Beach, California. Uh, we're big fan, big supporter. You know, wherever you go, you know, I'm definitely going to support you. Thank you. Um, call me when you do your next events. I'll be there. And uh, But for, for all of you who do not know, which is hard to believe, tell them where they could find you. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Mexi Papa Adventures. Really easy, like that. Just like that, Mexi Papa Adventures. You don't, you don't even have to put the underscore, none, none of that. If you type it, my face will pop up real quick. <laughs> no platforms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And with that said, we'll see you guys later.